Chapter 10. Uh, the name of this one's a bit general, analytic geometry, and uh, it's kind of misleading. Analytic geometry is its own area of mathematics, which has a little bit of calculus in it, uh, a lot of this conic stuff in here, uh, some trigonometry as well, uh, depending on where you take that. A lot of the times universities have that, and it's for computer science majors and stuff like that, uh, sometimes architects and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to be going over, and this particular chapter, analytic geometry, only covers conic sections. So this chapter is kind of short. It's only four sections uh, long. And if we're in STC, the dual enrollment course, we're going to be looking at only the first three sections because we're running out of time before the end of the semester at STC. Uh, if we're in the pre-AP course, this will be the last stuff. And I'm going to go over all four uh, sections for chapter 10. But we're going to be slowing it down a bit. Uh, I'd like to do maybe one section a week since these last four weeks, we're going to be worrying about AP exams. So uh, for my pre-APs, we'll go way slower than we're used to. It's going to be one section a week. So there will be assignments. Uh, I ended up deciding that I'm just going to give you guys tiny, tiny assignments uh, for each week, and you should get, you should be able to do it quickly. So it's only going to be one video you're going to have to watch a week, uh, but you'll only have the one section per week, and it's not going to be that that rough. This is a pretty simple chapter, and it's a good one to end on since it's a lot easier than the trigonometry stuff. Uh, as long as you're looking at the notes and the videos, it should be pretty simple to follow along. Okay, so conic sections. Conic sections uh, have uh, their roots in, uh, what is it, Greek geometry, Euclid, uh, Apollonius, uh, Pythagoras. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, Greek mathematicians that uh, studied this stuff, and the one who's most famous for, for coming up with the, the, the format that we're used to in a high school setting uh, would be Apollonius, which is uh, kind of like a successor of... Uh, of Euclid, who's the father of geometry, or who we understand is the father of geometry. So what he did was he took Euclid's work and he continued it in conic sections. He has a book on just conic sections that I've read before. So basically these conic sections are geometrical figures that could be formed by taking this double-sided cone and taking intersections between that and a rectangular or a Euclidean plane. So a flat surface and taking intersections with that double cone. So you have, and it's not just these four that we're limited to, we have the circle, we have the ellipse, which is just tilted compared to the circle, we have the parabola, which is tilted a lot more. If you tilt it even more, you get a hyperbola. Now there are some other, uh, what we call degenerate shapes that we can get, or degenerate conics that we can get uh, if we take this uh, rectangular plane or this Euclidean plane and intersect it in certain ways. There's a way that if I place it here just a little further up, translate it here, it'll only intersect at that one particular point. So a point, a single point, is technically uh, one of the conic sections, but it's one of the degenerate ones that we don't, we don't study. A line is another one of those. If you take the parabola situation, and if you move that or translate that up to where it's just perfect enough to where you have this line where they intersect, and that's a possibility. So lines technically are also conic sections. But these are the four interesting ones, non-trivial ones or non-degenerate ones that we're going to be going over. So in this particular section, we're going to limit ourselves to just parabolas. Those are the ones we understand very well so far. And then we'll move on to ellipses in section two, hyperbolas in section three, which circles, by the way, are special forms of ellipses. So those are going to be in section two as well. Section four is like a generalization of all three sections. Uh, and uh, it, it takes it just a little bit further. For my STC, we're not going to cover that because once we've covered one, two, and three, we're good. Uh, but for my pre-AP, since I need uh, four assignments for the rest of the year, we'll be covering all four sections and it should be easy. So my STCs are having to do the first three sections in one week's time before the end of the, before the, end of the semester with STC. So uh, a loci definition. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be thinking of conic sections uh, the idea is a conic section is formed by taking this double-sided cone and intersecting it with another figure. So they play a lot like, uh, in geometry, what an algebraic equation is. But uh, we have an analogy between algebra and geometry. So it's, it's basically like a geometrical equation, and the solution to a geometrical equation is what we call a locus. Loci for uh, plural, so it's, it's in plural. So a locus would be uh, singular. So defined, it's or the de definition is going to be 
It's the set of all points that satisfies a geometric property. So a geometric property is some statement that's either satisfied or not satisfied by a geometrical figure. So it, you can end up turning it into equation by uh, saying congruence. Uh, so there's similarity, congruence, and stuff like that. But either way, so the circle is the easiest one that we can understand. understand. The definition of a circle is based in a, a locus type definition, or it has a locus type statement to it. So the circle is the set of all points on a Euclidean plane or a Euclidean surface that those points are equidistant to the same point. So there is some distance, some fixed distance that we're going to go ahead and have. We have some fixed point P, which is also known as the center of the circle. And what I'd like is using that center and that distance, find all points that are that distance away from that middle point, that one point P, and that will form a circle. So that's a example of a locus. A parabola has a much more complicated uh, definition and we'll go through it slowly. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the, the definition, the, the locus definition, and we're going to show that in algebra, if I add a coordinate system, a rectangular coordinate system, the equation that relates those two coordinates, x and y, are going to be quadratic in form. So parabolas in geometry are quadratic in algebra. So there's going to be a, we're going to see that uh, they play the way that we, we used to see them playing. So the definition here, it's the set of all points. So it's every single point that satisfies this geometrical property. And the geometrical property is that each of those points has the same distance to a point called the focus and a line called the directrix. So in space or on the plane, there's a line and then there's some point. This point is called the focus and this line is called the directrix. What I want to do is I want to find every point, which I could draw that in red, and I want to find every point that is the same distance to both of those geometrical figures. So let's say, for example, if I draw a, a dotted line, which is a perpendicular uh, line to the directrix, then there is a point right down the middle. So if I take the bisector of that line segment, that connects the focus and the directrix, that's a point that satisfies that definition. So that particular point is the same distance away from the focus, that's from here to here, as it is from the directrix, from here to here. That's just one point. I want every single point that does that. So it ends up being the case that that first point that I drew, uh, perpendicular from the focus to the directrix, happens to be the vertex of the parabola. And if I move away from that vertex, the shape looks like this. And then like this on this other side. So there's a focus, which focuses the shape or the line or the curve, and a directrix, which also helps shape it. So if I take a random point out here, it's the same distance this way as it is this way. Or if I take a point out over here, it's the same distance from here to here as it is from here to, I have to extend this line here. So it's the same point between, or it's the same distance between that point and that line. And uh, normally we take a perpendicular to be the shortest distance. And that's how we form a parabola in geometry. So it's it's a constructionist type way of doing that. Geometry, we, or sorry, in algebra, we're used to just setting equations, graphing them on a calculator. A lot easier than it is in geometry. But that's the original definition of parabolas, and parabolas predate algebra. Algebra as we know it, uh, was 1500s, 1600s, uh, and uh, geometry was in the BCs. So this is stuff that they've known for a long time, well before algebra was actually uh, studied. So let's talk about vertical parabolas. And what we're going to do is we're going to show that in algebra, they come out to a quadratic equation, two-dimensional x and y variables. So using the same definition, I'd like to come up with a coordinate plane expression for these things. So we will call each of these axes x then y. So x here, y here. To make the math as easy as possible, I'm going to take the focus, the focal point f, with coordinates 0, so that way it's on the y-axis, and then some distance. We normally call it p. Some textbooks call it c. Our textbook has it as a p. 
So it's P from here to here. So that's where we're going to place it. It makes the math a little bit easier if I place it there specifically. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the directrix down here, same distance P from here to here. So also P from there to there. So then algebraically, that forms what equation? It's a Y since it's horizontal in this case. So I'm making that line horizontal. So it's Y equals to a number. And what number? That would be negative P if that's P down this way. So it's below the X axis. It's got to be negative. So then I can go ahead and plot a point here where they intersect the Y axis and the directrix. That is the point. What would I call that? I can call that point D and that's zero negative P if I wanted to. So there's my setup. That's the focus and the directrix that I'm going to use to derive an equation. And that's the easiest way that I could do this. So we want all points. So all points in a plane, this is the coordinate plane that is, uh, to a fixed point. So they're equidistant. So they're the same distance from the focus to the directrix. Right away, I know a point that fits that description, the origin. That's the reason why I set it up this way. So that way the origin is the same distance off between those two. So it's the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here if I had drawn that perfectly. So it kind of looks like the directrix is a little further out, but that's P from here to here and that's P from here to here. So I designed it so that way the vertex of this parabola would be at the origin. So you put F above and then uh, D, the directrix, below. So then we continue. So the origin, all right here, this is a theorem or a fact. The origin, 0, 0, is on the parabola. The way I've set it up. So then, let's take another point off the origin. So let's say all the way out here. So we have some point, and I want it to be the same distance from, the, uh, from that point to the directrix. That's going to be kind of hard to draw. But we have a point, I'm going to call that point, uh, let's see, what would I call it? I could just call it A. I don't want to use P because I already used P for a distance. So we'll call this point A. And this point, we'll just say that we're going to have variable coordinates X and Y. And we're going to try to force it so that way it's on the parabola and satisfies the definition for a parabola. So in order for it to satisfy the definition of the parabola, then it has to have the same distance between that point A and the focus as it is away from the directrix. So those two blue lines should have the same uh, length. So those two line segments should have the same length. So we're going to call this one distance from here to here. Well, actually, no, I know what that distance is because it's vertical, straight vertical. In order for us to come up with the, uh, the distance between a point and a horizontal line, you draw it straight vertical, so that way it's perpendicular. Perpendicular is the shortest path to a line. So it's perpendicular to the line that we want to go to. So if that's the case, then all we really need is the Y distance from here to here. What is that Y distance between there and there? Well, the Y coordinate is Y at that point, and the Y coordinate down here is negative P. So then that distance, I'm going to call this distance D1. D1 is equal to Y plus P. That's the vertical distance from that point A to the directrix at Y is equal to negative P. So Y plus P is that distance that I'm looking for. That's supposed to be equal to, I'm going to call this D2 from here to here. So I need that distance as well. So that distance D2, that one's going to be a little bit tougher. Because that one, I'm not assuming, that doesn't form a horizontal or a vertical line perfectly. It's some slanted line with a slope. So then that's a little different. I have to go with some different means to figure out what that distance is. There's a formula for distance, so I'm going to have to use that. I didn't have to use the formula for the first one because that's straight vertical. This one's vertical and horizontal, so I'm going to have to apply the distance formula, which starts with a big square root. You take the difference in the x-coordinates, x minus 0, and you square it. So that's going to be x squared. And then you take the difference between the y-coordinates and you square that difference. So that's going to be y. And you add both of those square values. So x squared plus y minus p squared. 
And here's my equation. y plus p is equal to the square root of x squared plus y minus p squared. So from here, we're supposed to get an equation for a quadratic expression or for some quadratic curve. So then let's see. In order to solve, and normally we like to solve for y. So I'm going to try to solve for one of these variables. And in order to solve for one of these variables, I need to isolate either x or y by squaring both sides. So I have to take y plus p, and I square both sides. We get x squared plus y minus p squared on this side. On the left-hand side, we got y plus p squared. So we've squared both sides successfully. Now, in order for me to solve, and I could try to choose what I'm going to solve for, either x or y. Uh, x, we can solve for no problem. Uh, y, however, I'd have to simplify both of those expressions because that's not simplified. So what I'd like to do is maybe expand that first expression and this other expression that have y in it with a square. So I have to square both. And you guys already know how to do this. That's a binomial being squared. There's a perfect, uh, perfect square formula. You get y squared plus 2 times p times y plus p squared. That we should remember. Plus x squared just drops down. This one is going to be y squared minus 2 times p times y and then plus p squared. Now you'll notice a bunch of stuff cancels out. The y squareds, if I try subtracting one and moving it to the other side, it's going to cancel out with the other one on the other side. Same thing with p squared. And then I have 2py equals x squared minus 2py. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate x and y so that way y is on one side, x is on the other. I'm going to move that negative 2py so that way it becomes positive on the other side. So if I add that 2py to both sides, you're going to get 4py equals x squared. And in this case, uh, we're used to an algebra solving for y, and it's easy to solve for y here. If I wanted to solve for x, I'd have to square root both sides, and it's going to look ugly. In this case, we could just solve for y. You would divide by 4p on both sides. So you would get 1 divided by 4p times x squared. And that is actually the standard form equation for a parabola that's vertical, so it's oriented vertically, centered at the vertex. So you'll notice right away, algebraically, we're not violating any rules by having the origin on this parabola. If you plug in 0, 0, you get a true statement, 0 equals to 0. But then this also gives me an equation to figure out x-coordinates or y-coordinates for given x-coordinates. And that's going to detail what the curve looks like. So that's an algebraic expression for the curve that looks something like this. So it's parabolic. That's the same on the other side, too. And there's my parabola. So that's the equation for a vertical parabola. So in this case, we had a focus at 0, comma, p. This is general. Directrix at y equals negative p. That's an equation for a line. Those two I forced onto the graph. Those are the two I decided to make that way. And then as a result, the vertex ended up becoming, and that was dependent on what we chose for the uh, focus in the directrix, ended up becoming 0, 0. And uh, we also have what's called an axis of symmetry, which we'll just call it the axis. The axis of symmetry, because this is a parabola, parabolas are symmetric, and the line of symmetry is going to be perpendicular to the directrix. So the directrix is horizontal, axis of symmetry is vertical, and uh, the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex and the focus. So the focus and the vertex are together on the same line known as the axis of symmetry. And what's the equation of that axis of symmetry? It's the y-axis in this case, x equals 0. That's all important information. Okay, so that is a derivation of the equation for a vertical parabola, and that's also given, this is going to be a bit more specific and uh, more detailed, this has more geometric information compared to what we studied earlier in the previous chapters uh, for quadratic equations and parabolas. So this is also going to tell us where the focus is at. So if I have an equation for a quadratic function, I can find out what that focal distance is and use some math to figure out where the directrix is at also. That's what we're going to be doing in the problems that follow. So example number one, 
we have an equation y is equal to x squared, which is the parent graph for all quadratic functions in algebra 2, algebra 1, algebra 2. Now they want us to find the focus, the directrix, and the axis of symmetry of, the, of that particular parabola. And then we'll go ahead and graph it. So we know how to graph that super easy. So 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 4, 3, 9, negative 3, 9. And that's all I can graph really because the next one's 4, 16 negative 4, 16, and so on. And this only goes up to 10. That's a horrible looking parabola, but you know how it is, we'll keep it. So where's the focus, where's the directrix? So we have to do a bit of math. Y is equal uh, x squared. I was gonna write one over x squared, but that would've been wrong. What we're going to do is we're gonna compare it to the equation that we have over here. Y is equal to one over four p times x squared. So that's supposed to be equal to one over 4p times x squared. We're going to set these two guys equal to each other, and we're going to try to figure out what the value of 4p is. Okay, so because they share x squared as a factor, we can ignore it. And if I ignore x squared in the first left-hand side, we get 1. On this side, we get 1 over 4p. So it has to be the case that 1 over 4p is equal to 1. So you just set the coefficients equal to each other, and the coefficient on x squared is just 1. So 1 is equal to 1 over 4p. Solve for p. I would multiply both sides by 4p. That's going to equal to 1. And then we divide by 4. p is equal to 1 fourth. So that right here is very, very important information. Also, they're asking me for things that I already know. Vertex, we know that that's just 0, 0. The axis of symmetry, we already know that that's the y-axis, x equals to 0. So I have both of these done. We need the focus and the directrix. And I've already graphed it, really. So just the focus and the directrix left. So where's the focus? So we go back to this thing. The focus happens to be on the same axis of symmetry. So it's on the axis of symmetry together with the vertex. So it's on that axis of symmetry line. In this case, it's on the y-axis. And the directrix is going to be perpendicular. And if you remember, the distance between the focus and the vertex is p. And it's the same p distance between the vertex and the directrix, also p. So same idea here. In this case, p is 1 fourth. So I'd have to really, really zoom in to be able to show what that's going to look like. So if I'm really annoyed with the way that I drew that parabola. It looks kind of ugly. But 1 fourth, let's say, is here, and that's the focus. 1 negative 1 fourth is down here, and I draw a line that goes through negative 1 fourth, and that's the directrix. So the focus here, I'm going to call this F, is at 0 1 fourth, because it's 1 fourth above the x-axis. This right here is the directrix, I'll call that D, so it's a line, and that's at y equals negative one-fourth, because it's one-fourth below the x-axis. And that's the remaining information, focus and directrix. And it's as simple as that for parabolas like this. So that's example 1a, I'm expecting there to be a b. Yeah, there's a b. Same idea, find the focus, the directrix, the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and then graph it. So we'll start off with the equation 8y is equal to negative x squared. x is squared. We can solve for y, and x will still be squared. So I'm guessing this is still a vertical parabola. So here's what I'll do. I'll divide by 8 both sides. y is equal to negative 1 eighth x squared. Now, we weren't allowed to have negatives in this particular equation, and that's because I drew it pointing up, and that's because I drew the directrix below the x-axis. If you flip it, uh, focus is on the bottom, directrix is on the top of the x-axis or above the x-axis. So if those got flipped, your parabola is going to be pointing down. So the, the, the reason for that, if you draw a directrix, and I could draw that slanted, so a slanted directrix, and if I draw a focus down here, your vertex is right in between both of those, and your curve is going to follow this shape. So they get the parabola shape gets directed by the focus and the directrix. So the 
parabola will open on the opposite side of the directrix. So if the directrix is above it, it's going to be pointing down. Your parabola will be pointing down. So your focus will always be found inside the curve in geometry. So your focus will always be in the curve, not out of the curve. Your directrix is out of the curve. So in this case, we have to be really careful. We didn't have negatives in that previous example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that that negative is coming from the value of P. So 1 over negative 8 x squared is what I'm going to say that is. We set this equal to what we said earlier, 1 over 4p x squared. And what you do is you take those coefficients and set them equal to each other. So this thing and this thing we will set equal to each other. So that's 1 over negative 8 is equal to 1 over 4p. We cross multiply and we get 4p equals negative 8 as a result. And then what we want to do is we want to solve for p. You divide by 4 and you get p is equal to negative 2. Negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. So what this is telling me is that focal distance is negative 2. We, we can take on a physics mindset and if there's a negative sign, it just means it's going the other direction. So it's the other way. So instead of the focus being above the x-axis, in this case it's 2 below. So let me see if I could draw that. I'm going to do that in red. Actually, then I'll leave that in black. I'll draw the parabola in red. So your vertex is going to be at the origin. That should be obvious, because if I plug in 0 for x here, you get 0 for y. So the origin is 0, 0. Focus is negative 2. So that's the focus. Your directrix is positive 2 now, 2 above. It got flipped because of that negative sign. And where's that parabola going to be pointing? So first off, the parabola will have a vertex at 0, 0. And then it's going to be pointing outwards this way, which I'm not going to draw any points, or I'm not going to plot any points and figure out what those exact x and y coordinate pairs are going to be. We'll just draw it that way. And that's all I'm going to expect, other than, of course, what they're asking for. And what they're asking for is we want the actual coordinates of the focus. That's easy, 0, negative 2. The equation for the directrix. That is y equals 2 in this case, not negative 2. y is equal to 2. What else did they want? So focus, directrix, vertex, axis of symmetry, and then draw a graph, which we already have the graph. So we're only missing now the vertex. And that vertex is 0, 0. And the axis of symmetry is still the y-axis, x equals to 0. And that's everything they wanted, a graph and then those four bits of information for that particular parabola. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the general format that these things could take. And by general, I mean, uh, cause general is probably a bad word to use since we're gonna have something called general form in section four, if we're gonna do that. Uh, the standard form of a vertical parabola will also factor in a parabola that has a vertex anywhere. So this is a special case where the vertex is 0, 0, the origin. Now we can move the parabola so that way the vertex is somewhere else. Now this parabola that we have here will start off with one that is centered or has a vertex at the origin. So I'm going to do this one in black. There is a directrix which passes through that line, which I could have done better. So that directrix is, I'll call it D, Y equals negative P. I'm going to zoom in a bit more here. That vertex is 0, 0. This focus is 0, comma P. And then we had a uh, axis of symmetry at X equals to 0. So I'll just go with those three for now because the axis is right through the uh, Y axis. So we're going to move that so that way my vertex goes to let's call this h and let's say k we normally use h and k for a new vertex we did that when we studied circles we already studied circles back in chapter two and we can move that so that way the center or the vertex sorry not the center the vertex is now at h comma k so that's my new vertex let me rewrite that 
So v, my new vertex, is at h comma k. <clears throat> so my parabola should look something like this. I'm going to go through the vertex. It's going to look something like that. So my new parabola looks like that. Where's my focus? My new focus is up here somewhere. Call that f. And then my directrix goes through that point right there. So the new directrix d. And my new focus f. And then my axis of symmetry, which I've already drawn it, it's that vertical line that's dotted. This is the axis. And that one is x equals h for sure. Sounds pretty easy. So then where's the directrix now? This is y equals, because it's uh, horizontal. And where is it now? That passes through, well, this was negative p down here, and it got moved up a value k. So this is k minus p. So the reason being, this is p from here to here, from that directrix and the x-axis. The directrix is now here, and the new x-axis is up there, and that's also p. So it's k, but down p units, so it's k minus p. That's the reason why. So the new directrix, the new axis are here. The new vertex is here, hk. All I need now is the focus. So the focus has the same coordinates as the vertex, except the y-coordinate it's moved up. So it's the same x coordinate, h, y coordinate is now k, and that's plus p, because from here to here it's p again. So it's k plus p. So it looks a little messy, but that's what that should look like. So I'm going to write those again in just a little bit. So that's all four bits of information, your vertex, your focus, your directrix, and your axis. Now what does the equation look like? So the equation for the black one is x squared Wait, what was it? It was y equals 1 over 4px squared. That was the original with a vertex of 0, 0. That's going to change to, and I'll draw that one in red since I drew the, the uh, graph in red. That's going to be y, and if we wanted to translate both x and y by a certain amount, if it's a positive h and a positive k, you subtract them. y minus k equals 1 over 4p x minus h, and that one's going to be squared because x was squared. So there's my new equation. And that's just a geometrical transformation. In algebra, if you wanted to take an equation, a graph, some curve, and you wanted to translate it left, right, up, down, you would do it this way. You would replace the y coordinate or the y value with y minus the value you want it to move up, and then x minus the value you want it to move right. If you added a positive value, then it would be moving left or down. Okay, so, <clears throat> so that's the equation. Now, those are all given here, I think. Yeah, so here they are. So here we have two vertical parabolas, which now have some off-origin center. The equation, x squared, or x minus h squared is equal to 4p, y minus k. And what do they do? They took the 4p that was underneath a 1 on this side, and they multiplied it to both sides. Same idea. So the way that I normally write it is y minus k equals 1 over 4p x minus h squared. Same thing. Those are both the same thing. The vertex is hk. Axis of symmetry is x equal to h, which I'm going to look at that. And yeah, I got it right. Focus is h comma k plus p. And I got that one right. Uh, the directrix is y is equal to k minus p. We got that one right as well. So that right here is the general information for a parabola that's vertical written in standard form. Now we're going to do that to solve a couple of problems. We'll look at example two. Give the focus, the directrix, and the axis of symmetry of each of these parabolas. Then use this information to graph the parabola. And what I'm going to do, because sometimes this is too zoomed in, I'm not going to use that coordinate grid. We'll ignore it, and I'm going to just draw it by hand somewhere else off the side. Change this to black. And we have 6y plus 3 equals x minus 4 squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the y plus 3 portion by dividing both sides by 6. You'll get y plus 3, which there's no more need for parentheses, 1 sixth x minus 4 squared. Now, because this right here is supposed to equal to 1 over 4p, I can say that 1 sixth must equal to 1 over 4p. And we can solve for p by cross-multiplication. 4p equals 6. 
divide 6 by 4 and you get p is equal to 3 over 2 or 1.5 if you want. So p is equal to 1 or 1 and a half, 1.5, 3 over 2, all the same thing. So what that tells me is that I get to draw my parabola a certain way. So this is vertical first off. So it's going to have a vertical axis and I'm going to call this the axis. And I can already give the equation for the axis of symmetry, not y. x equals, and I need to know what the vertex is, by the way. So what's the vertex? It is h, k. And in the formula, those are being subtracted. Minus k, minus h when you write it in that form. Well, we have plus 3 for y, or k. So that's going to be a negative 3. And then uh, minus 4 inside x, that's 4 comma negative 3. So you look at the number that's subtracting y. It's being added, so you flip it. It's negative, negative 3. Uh, you look at the number that's subtracting x, and that's a 4, so you just write it as a 4. So the format you want it in is where it's subtraction. If it's straight subtraction, you leave the number the way it is without the minus sign. If it's addition, you flip the sign, make it negative. So it's opposite of what you see. <clears throat> so 4, negative 3. So the vertex, let's say it's down here. So vertex, let me write it like this. 4, negative 3. And that makes this x equals 4 for the axis. So now I have 1 half of the information we need. Vertex and axis. So then let me draw my parabola this way. Something like this. And I need two more things. The focus. And that focus, f has coordinates 4 comma something. So the 4 is obvious because it's on the axis of symmetry, so x equals to 4. The y coordinate's not so obvious. Well, the distance between the vertex and the focus is p, 3 and a half, or sorry, 3 halves, 1 and a half. I add that to the y coordinate on the vertex. So that would be negative 3 over 2 if you do the math correctly. So negative 3 over 2. I'm going to box that. And then the directrix, which is also the same distance p, but below the vertex in this case. So then the directrix is y equals, so I'm going to call that d for directrix. And this one is y equals, I got to, I have to move the negative 3 coordinate, the y coordinate on the vertex v, down by 1 and a half, or 3 halves. So that would give me, what would that be? Negative 9 halves? Yeah, it should be negative 9 halves. And there's the equation for the directrix. And there's all four bits of information that we needed for this particular problem. Okay, a couple of other things. I didn't need to know if it was opening up or down because I was able to find out based off of the equation where the vertex was at. Actually, no. I just went ahead and drew it up. So why did it work out that it's pointing up? And that's because the equation, it's all positive. So the Coefficient on x squared is positive if I isolate y, or if I isolate the y term, the, the linear term, y plus 3. So if I divide it by 6 and y plus 3 is all by itself, the other side remained positive. So that means it's opening up. So the value of p was positive. If the value of p is negative, it gets flipped, it moves down, or it points down. And that's basically it for vertical parabolas. So all we have left are horizontal parabolas, and then we'll just do like a few uh, exercises concerning that, and then we'll be done with the section. So, <clears throat> parabolas that are off to the side. So there's a way that we can actually derive them. If I had drawn here a focus somewhere, and then a directrix, which is vertical instead of horizontal, your parabola ends up becoming horizontal. So if I had drawn a, let's say a focus over here, and then a directrix that's vertical. So if this is the directrix, this is the focus. Then your vertex would be in here. And your parabola would be pointing this way. Remember the focus is inside the curve. The directrix is outside the curve. If you want to think of it this way. So if you draw your directrix vertically, your, uh, your parabola will be horizontal. And if you do the math on the derivation, which I'm not going to, it's basically the exact same derivation that we saw for the vertical ones at the beginning of the video. You'll get this equation instead. 
which that's the same thing as the way that I normally write it is x minus h equals 1 over 4p y minus k squared. I, I like to write the square term with the 1 over 4p. So it doesn't matter. You could use whichever, as long as you know which one's which. So your vertex is hk again. Your axis of symmetry switches to something that's uh, horizontal now, y is equal to k. Your focus should be on the same y coordinate as your axis of symmetry. And then your uh, same thing as the vertex too. They all have a y coordinate k, so k all the way throughout. And then the directric is x is equal to h minus p, which is the same x coordinate as the, let's see, actually no. So that's going to be the x coordinate of the vertex minus p because it's uh, to the left. No longer below, now it's left. So then here are your two scenarios. So then, here they're going to tell you that if p is positive, it moves to the right or it opens to the right. p is negative, that parabola opens to the left. Stuff we got to remember if we're doing the homeworks. So look at example three. And then there's an example four and it should be pretty simple from there. So we're going to do one example where they give us the equation, find those four pieces of information like we did for examples one and two. And then for example four, they're going to give you some pieces of information and from that information find the equation. So backwards. So we're doing it both ways, forwards and backwards. So forwards is where they give us the equation, figure out what the graph looks like. So again, I'm not going to use the coordinate plane. I'll just draw it by hand like I did for example two over here. So this is all you need, those four bits of information and which way the curve is going. So just draw a general parabola in the direction it's supposed to be based off of the information you have. So first is to find out what that information is. So 2x plus 6 equals y plus 1 squared. Divide by 2 both sides. x plus 6 is 1 half y plus 1 squared. And what you do is you take that 1 half. 1 half is equal to 1 over 4p. Cross multiply. 4p is equal to 2. Or if you divide by 4, p is equal 1 half. That's the key for figuring out the vertex, the or not the vertex, sorry, uh, the focus and the directrix if you already have the vertex. So the vertex is probably the first thing I'd have you do. You look at this equation. And h is negative 6 k is negative 1. You look at the numbers that are being subtracted from x and y. If they're added instead, you flip them. That's why they're both negative in this case, because they're both pluses in the equation. So if those are plus 6 and plus 1, then that's a negative 6, negative 1. Make sure the one that's on x is the x-coordinate. The one that's on y is the y-coordinate. There's my vertex. My vertex is v is negative 6, comma, negative 1. So I'm going to draw a point somewhere, and that's going to be the vertex. Negative 6, negative 1. Look at the value of p, and it was positive. Nothing in that equation was negative here. So p ended up being neg uh, positive. It's a weird looking equal sign. So if that's the point, or if that's, if that's the case, then uh, my focus will be to the right. The parabola is going to open right. So I know that the parabola opens right, so I'll just draw a generalized parabolic curve. There's an axis of symmetry which goes this way. And the focus is here, somewhere. So it's somewhere inside the curve, I don't care how far. Physically, that is, when you're drawing. How far it has to be, though, theoretically, is one half from here to here. So if that's the case, I have to take the x-coordinate, because that's along a horizontal line, and I have to add one half to negative 6. So that's negative 5.5, if you want. And that's fine, negative 5.5 negative 1. Y coordinates the same because it's along the same horizontal line. My directrix is a line that crosses through, let's say, that intersection point with the axis. Call that D. And that's a horizontal, uh, sorry, not horizontal. That's a vertical line. So that's X equals to a number. And it's negative 6, but with 1 half this way between the vertex and the directrix. So that is negative 6.5, comma, negative 1, which you could leave it as a decimal, no big deal. And one more thing, what's the last thing I need? So I have the focus, I have the vertex, and I have the directrix. I'm missing the axis of symmetry. So axis is, this is a line, y equals negative 1. That one's easy. That's just the y coordinate for the vertex or the focus. 
same thing. And there's my graph. That's exactly what they wanted for this problem. And that's good enough. So when you're turning in homeworks for this or for my STC students, because uh, you're having to take a test for this, that's the work that you need to show. So the graph with the parabola pointing the right way, and then you label those four things, axis, directrix, vertex, focus. So that's example three, we're almost done. So that's basically it for the graphing. That's the most important part of this entire section. If you know how to do that, you've mastered this section. Let's go backwards. This is a little harder. Example four, write the equation or write an equation for each parabola in standard form with the given information. So using the information they gave us, write the equation all the way out. So you're done when the equation's given. I'm going to graph some stuff, though, even though they didn't require the graph, because I, I need to look at a visual to help. So for me, I like drawing pictures because that's going to help me figure out stuff mathematically a little bit better. So let's see. Vertex, negative 2, comma, 4. Directrix, y equals 1. So y equals or x equals are the types of equations for the directrix or the axis that you're going to see. The directrix, because it's y equals to 1, that is a horizontal line. So because it's a horizontal line at y equals 1, and the vertex has a y-coordinate bigger than 1, the y-coordinate for the vertex is 4. So that's the vertex, and I'll say that that points here. So that parabola is going to point up. And I don't care if that parabola looks perfect or whatever, as long as it's two curves pointing up. So not a big deal. And uh, so what that tells me is my equation looks like this. y minus k equals 1 over 4p x minus h squared. If the parabola is vertical, the equation has an x squared, not a y squared. So that's important. Vertical parabolas, x is squared. Horizontal parabolas, y is squared. So then the distance between here and here is p, the focal distance. And it's a positive value because the vertex is pointing up. So how far apart are the vertex and the directrix? You look at the difference in the y coordinates, in this case, 3. So p is 3. So right off the bat, y minus k equals 1 over 4 times 3, since p is 3, times x minus h squared. So 4 times 3 is 12. So that's going to end up being 12. Uh, so I'll put that on the, the back burner. So it's 12. The other thing I want to do, since I don't want to write too much, I don't want a third line and a fourth line, so I'll, I'll settle with a third line, is I can also fill in the values of h and k. And that comes from the vertex. This is h. This one's k. h is always the one on x. k is always the one on y. So it's y minus k. In this case, y minus 4 equals 1 over 12, like we said earlier, it's going to be 12, and then x minus a negative 2, so that's x plus 2. Remember, that number is negative if inside it's plus. So if that number ended up being negative on the x-coordinate, it's because it was being added by 2. And there's my equation for letter A, that's done. That's based off of that graph. So let's look at letter B. Letter B, and I kind of wrote too much. I made that a little too big. So what I could probably do is resize it. Or I could move some information vertically below. And I guess that's fine. So letter B. Vertex is 3, negative 4. And the focus, they told me, is at 1, negative 4. So those two are going to be along the same vertical or horizontal line. Same y-coordinate. So the vertex and the focus have the same y-coordinate. So they're vertically aligned with each other. And it looks like the focus is to the left. Focus is 1, negative 4. Vertex is to the right, 3, negative 4. And hopefully that's obvious to you. That's just simple coordinate geometry. So focus is a point that's inside the curve. The parabola looks like this. Whoops. I zoomed out accidentally. Something like this. So maybe I do care if that doesn't look. That's not much better. I'll leave it that way. So your focus is out this way. One thing you need to know for that equation is what the value of P is. So here's the problem. That's opening to the left. 
if it's to the left or if it's down. So if it's a vertical parabola pointing down, a horizontal parabola pointing left, P is negative. So that's up here somewhere. Where's that at? Here. When P is less than zero, your parabola opens left. If P is less than zero and it's vertical instead of horizontal, you're, it's opening down. So this one's opening left. So that means P is some negative value. And how far apart are they? Two? So P is negative two as a result. Hopefully that makes sense. So then that's all I need for my equation because I have the vertex and I have the value of P. Those are the two major things. So here they only gave us a vertex and a focus. Here they only gave us a vertex and a directrix and that's minimal. That's all we need for the equation. One or the other, vertex focus, vertex directrix. So that's going to be, since it's horizontal, that is x minus h, no square on it, equals to 1 over 4p, y minus k squared. So if it's horizontal, y is squared. And the 1 over 4p goes with the square term. So then I start plugging in everything I see. That's x minus 3, because h is 3, equals 1 over negative 8. So negative 1 eighth, because that's 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And I'll just move the negative to the outside. And then y plus Four squared because k is negative 4 and there's my equation and that's basically all you need to know but there's going to be one more a part c and that one's going to be a little tougher so this one might take a little longer but not too long hopefully your focus is 2 1 they tell us it opens left and then it contains 2 point or 2 5 we'll see what that means in a little bit so let me draw my focus Focus F to 1. It's a parabola that opens left. So something like this. So if it opens left, then you have, what is it? Y, actually no, it's X minus H equals 1 over 4P. Y minus K squared. That's the equation I used over here. That's the one for a horizontal opens left so it's horizontal so then I start plugging in what I know and I don't know either H K or P that's a tough one so that's H K or P but they told me that there's a point 2 5 so where would 2 5 be physically it would actually be on a vertical line intersection with that parabola where x equals 2. Notice how they have the same x coordinate. That's going to be good information. So that's 2 comma 5. So that is 2 comma 5. And what's what's the use of knowing that? The use of knowing that is that's the distance between here and here. That's uh, going to be 4. And what that tells me is, and I didn't draw this properly, if I had drawn this properly, then I probably would have drawn this a little fatter. Probably is a little fatter than this. So something like that. And that's supposed to be 2, 1 there. So 2, 1 for the focus. So that is also the focal distance. That tells me that the focal distance is 4. And if you don't believe me, uh, the reason... Actually, no, that's not the focal distance. That's going to be two, half of the focal distance. And the reason being, it's because if you remember the definition of a vertex, the distance between any point on the parabola to the focus is the same as the distance to the directrix. So if the directrix is back here, and the distance between that point and the focus is four, then the distance between the same point and the directrix must also be four. Vertex is halfway between the focus and the directrix. So the vertex is right in between focus and directrix, which means that's 2 and this is 2. So my focal length, P, is negative 2. Negative because it's opening to the left. So that's a deduction that I have to be able to make with this information, which otherwise didn't seem to be enough info. So if P is equal to negative 2, and I can figure out what the vertex is then. The vertex is, it's a different X coordinate and it's zero now because it's two to the right of the focus and two to the left of the directrix. So it's zero comma one, I believe. 
because it's the same y coordinate because it's a horizontally oriented uh, parabola. So then p is equal to negative 2, which I need to move. I have that down over here somewhere. And it's going to be x minus 0 equals. That is 1 over 4 times p, which is negative 8 y minus 1 squared would be the equation of this parabola. And that's going to be it for this particular section. So we'll stop here.